Hi everyone, welcome back to Online Classroom J. Gutio. In this video, we are going to look at the principle of expansion and contraction of matter. Well, in this topic, there is one main concept. That is, when it is hot, expansion happens. An object expands when it is heated up. When it is cold, contraction happens. Okay, so this is the main concept that you need to hold on to as we understand or discuss all the little topics in under this title, okay, under this topic. Well, expansion and contraction can happen in all three states of matter, that is solid, liquid, and gas. Let's take a look at solid first. We will look at example for all three matters, all three different states of matters. So for solid, here is a metal bar with a gauge. In the beginning, this metal bar will fit perfectly into the gauge. When you heat it up, you will quickly find out that the metal bar no longer fit into the gauge. It becomes too big. Why? When it is heated up, it is hot, expansion happens. How about liquid? Can liquid expand? Yes. Let's take a look. There's a conical flask and we can fill it up with colored water. So in this case, in this example, we fill it up with red colored water. If you heat up this water, you will find that the water level in this glass tube will rise. Why? Because the colored water has already expanded and pushed the level up. How about gas? Can gas expand or contract? Yes. For example, if you put a balloon that is deflated into a conical flask that is empty, there's only uh, air in it. Okay, so there's uh, gas in it. And we put the conical flask into a basin filled with hot water. And you will see that the balloon will expand okay why because the gas in the conical flask has expanded and fill up the balloon so why did expansion and contraction happen why does expansion happen when uh, the, the matter is heated up while contraction happen when it is cold we will look at the theory if you remember, this is the uh, arrangement of particles in solid. They are arranged in such a way that they are very close to each other in a fixed position. So the particles in a solid, they can only vibrate at a fixed position. They do not move around freely. When we heat it up, when it is heated, the particles will vibrate faster because now it is hotter and they have more energy, heat energy. And they will, as they move faster, okay, as they vibrate, okay, vibrate is the right word, they cannot move. As they vibrate faster, they will move further apart from each other. And that will cause the volume of the solid to increase and hence, expansion happen solid expands what happened when it is cooled the particles will vibrate slower because now they do not have that much energy it is cold okay and as they move on as they vibrate slower they will move closer to one another and this caused the volume of the solid to decrease as the volume of the solid decrease, contraction happens. Solid contracts. How about liquid and gas? Do you remember the, the arrangement of particles in liquid and gas? They can move freely. This is the arrangement of particles in liquid and this will be the gas. Okay, So the rest of the concept is very similar to uh, the solid. When it is heated, when liquid and gas are heated, the particles in them will move faster and they move randomly. And this causes the distance between them to increase. They become further away from each other. And the volume also increases for the liquid and gas. And hence, expansion happens. 
What about when they are cooled? Well, they move slower, and when they move slower, they are closer to each other, which causes the volume to decrease, and hence contraction happen. Once again, the main concept that we have here is when it is hot, expansion happen. When it is cold, contraction happen. What are the uses of expansion and contraction of matter in our daily life? Well, actually, they are very useful. For example, the mercury in thermometer is a heat conductor. We look at this in the previous video, remember? And how do we read the reading of the temperature from thermometer? It is from the expansion and the contraction of the mercury that is stored in the thermometer. So when it is hot, uh, the mercury will expand and hence move towards the right here in this picture. Okay, so you will read a higher temperature. So the, the other way is true for when it is colder. This is a railway tracks. Railway tracks is the track where uh, the train moves on. It's the tracks for the train. And if you look closely, between the rails, there will be a space called the gap. There will be a gap. What are this, the uses of this gap? Well, it is very important when they build the railway tracks to have this gaps. Why? Because during hot weather, this railway tracks will expand and they need space in order for them to expand and not change the shape of the railway track. If we do not have these gaps, the tracks will buckle and overlap and then the, the train might not be able to stay on the track and it can be very dangerous. The same goes to the steel bridges. The steel bridges are normally built with rollers and also gap on one end. And it is for the same reason, so that there is room for the bridges to expand during hot weather. So they will move forward and the bridge stay safe and also stay straight. If there's no gap or no roller here, during hot weather, as the steel bridges start to expand, it might uh, bend upward or downward and that can be very dangerous. Next, let's look at bimetallic strip. What is bimetallic strip? The word bi means two, metallic strip. So the strip that is made of two different metals. They are used in devices that depend on temperature regulation. For example, the fire alarm. They are made of two different types of metals because they contract and expand at different rates. For example, look at the picture here. There is a bimetallic strip here. We have copper at the top layer and iron at the lower layer. So during room temperature, they are not expanding or they are not contracting. When it is heated up, you can see that the copper actually expand more than the iron. Okay, the copper will expand more than the iron and hence it will bend downwards. And when they contract, they contract differently as well. Okay, you can see that they contract differently when it is cool and the copper actually contract less compared to uh, compared the, the the copper actually contract more compared to the iron. And that is why uh, copper is shorter and iron is longer and it bends upward. So, when do we use this bimetallic strip? Normally, in devices that depend on temperature regulation, like the fire alarm system. Fire alarm system is designed with a circuit. Look at this. This is an electric circuit that is incomplete at room temperature. So, this is room temperature when there's no fire. Okay, this electric circuit is not complete. The bimetallic strip is not touching the contact point. So, this 
circuit is not complete there's no electric current that is flowing and so the fire alarm is not ringing but when fire happens the fire alarm should ring how does that happen the circuit that is exposed to heat from a fire will begin to expand but because we are using bimetallic strip okay the copper the copper will expand faster and more than the steel causes the strip to move or bend towards the contact point so as they bend when they bend enough it will touch the contact point and complete the circuit system when the circuit system is completed then the alarm will rings because the current start to flow and cause the alarm the, cause the fire alarm to work what are some of the uses of expansion and contraction of matter that can help to solve simple problems well i'll show you two situation first if you have a bottle with a very tight lid that you find it hard to loosen you can try and submerge the lid in hot water why because when it is hot remember our concept when it is hot expansion happen so if the lid expand it will become looser and easier for you to open it next if you have a dented table tennis ball or a ping pong ball that is dented okay maybe you accidentally step on it how can you restore it well you can try to put the ball in a basin of hot water when you put them in the hot water the air inside the table tennis ball the air inside the ping pong ball will expand and push the ball that is dented back to its normal or usual form okay then you can restore the ping pong ball well that's all from jekutio in this video i shall see you in the next video okay bye if you have learned something new from this video don't forget to like and subscribe